The idea of an open source satellite is so exciting because it means that high technology is getting democratized. So when we heard about the project, we wanted to get involved immediately. We contact the R2Sat team and offer experience in sensors. And now, after a couple of months of hard working, here we are. Within five days, NanoSatisfy is going to be making history to a certain extent. And we will be part of that as well. So we are really, really happy for our contribution to this project. And now I'm, I can wait to see the launch. With the artist at launch so close, I remember when we realized that we have to do something due to Fukushima disaster and we knew that time was against us. My role as purchasing manager is to ensure that all hardware components are received at the value at the right time. So when I have to find those Geiger tubes, I realized that they are one of the most difficult sensors to find due to their focus on military and security entities. Moreover, at that time, companies from, the, from Europe and the US were completely sold out and we have to find those Geiger tubes in Chinese and Russian markets and they have their data sheets on all language and that was a nightmare. Yeah, it was a big challenge to work in this project from the research part. We have a, a lot of background in measuring radiation. We have uh, created a radiation sensor board for the Arduino community a couple of years ago. So we already knew that was like uh, the problems of measuring gamma radiation in F. We normally uh, use a Geiger tube like these ones you can see here because this was the, the project we made for the Arduino platform with the Geiger tube, an LCD, a uh, small microcontroller and everything plugged inside so that users could measure at their own houses, at their own gardens, at the schools, whatever, whatever they are. They could measure the radiation levels in Japan after uh, the accident in Fukushima and know that the levels was right. So when I was talking with uh, NanoSatisfy regarding the Ardusat project, we both think that could be a good idea to take this technology, take this knowledge, take this background and just put inside a satellite and obviously make it uh, functionable for that. And this was the result. I mean, like when we talk about launching things to the, to the space, it has to be minimum in size and in weight. And it's like four per three centimeters and it, uh, the weight is like uh, 40 grams. So yeah, it was incredible like uh, how we could research and decrease the size from the Arduino compatible uh, platform of board with this uh, small uh, specific uh, board for the Arduino project. So it was like a couple of months of hard research that we made in the research department uh, at Libellion. Uh, yeah, definitely with the collaboration with NanoSatisfy, um, we were really proud to be able to be part of this project and we are really excited because it's just five days for the launch and we want to be part of it in an incredible opportunity.
eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, ignition. And liftoff. Liftoff of the HTV on a journey to the International Space Station. We had a liftoff of the HTV launch vehicle number four with the corner 24 on board from the Tanegashima Space Center at 4.48.46 a.m. on August 4, 2013, Japan Standard Time. HTV for separation. <laughs> Thank you.